before we can actually start to UV unwrap this, there's one other thing that we need to tackle, and that is the shading, specifically across items like these cables and these bracing bars. So as you see, everything is what's known as hard shaded. We can see each and every individual polygon. This is not going to work for us because it does not lend itself well to making things appear smooth or round in this case. And there are two ways that you can fix this problem. You can either increase the number of polygons until the differences between the faces are so small that nobody can notice it, but that lends itself to creating a lot of triangles. Or you can make use of what are known as smoothing groups, which is rendering the edges as if they are smooth rather than harsh, as you see right here. However, Blender does not allow us to smooth individual edges. You can only smooth faces. So we're going to use a little technique in order to give ourselves control over the smoothing groups by using the faces. So here's what we're going to do. Let's start with this just because it's very simple and it'll get the point across very easily. So if I go hit tab and then hit A to select everything, I can go here to the very, very far left and I can go to shading and UVs and I can hit smooth. Now this makes everything seem smooth, but now it seems a little blobby. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our modifiers tab and we're going to add an edge split modifier. Now the way that this works is that there's a command inside of Blender that allows you to split apart edges. So if I were to select these and then go to control E and edge split, what that, that gives us the effect we want, but what it's actually done is it's split this into two different edge loops. It has split the edge into two groups, hence the name edge split. What the edge split modifier does is it does two things. Is that it will split several edges at once based on certain parameters, but it'll also give you the rendered look of having split the edges, but until you hit apply, the edges haven't actually been split. So we're going to make use of this. Now there's one problem here, and it's that it's determining which edges to split based on two parameters. The edge angle, and something called sharp edges. Now the edge angle will split them based on a certain threshold. So if I change this and lower it, you'll see more edges become split. We do not want this. In fact, we don't want it controlled by this at all. So we'll turn that off, and all that leaves is sharp edges. And what sharp edges are, are edges that are marked to be split by the edge split modifier. Or they also affect your, the appearance of your mesh if you are using something like a subdivision surface or a couple other modifiers. In our case, it's going to affect the edge split modifier. So the way this works is that if we select the edges that we want to be rendered as sharp, hit Control E, and we go up to Mark Sharp. Now if I hit Tab, you'll see around the sides our mesh appears smooth, but at the edges here where it makes a drastic change in angle, it appears sharp. Now these sharp edges are highlighted in blue in edit mode, so you can see what is sharp and what is not. And that gives us the look that we're going for without adding any additional polygons. So we need to do this for the cables and then also for this bracing bar. We don't need to do it for the corrugated walls or the door or the frame because the sharp edges look appropriate there. So I'll tackle the cable and the bracing bar next. Okay, so that's all of our edges marked as sharp. Now we need to mark their UV seams. So 
So when it comes to marking UV seams, here's how to think of it. It's important to consider how this model would unfold in 2D space. Imagine it as sort of a paper or a cardboard model and where you would cut it to be able to unfold it as cleanly as possible. So I'm going to I'm going to start with the singular objects first and I'll move on to the objects that have been mirrored next. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get out a UV, my UV editor. So I'll click and drag up here on the top right corner and I'll change this to my UV image editor. Now this object is located at 000, zero so it'll be easy to reposition. I'm just going to move it up so that I can see what I'm doing. This is going to be a complicated one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle some points that I think quite clearly need to be split off. I'll cut off the corner boxes first. So I'll cut all the way around and then I'll hit Control E and instead of marking sharp I'm going to mark seam and it'll be highlighted in red, meaning that it will be cut along those edges. So I'll do the same thing to the other corners here. Okay, I'll save this real quick. Now before we tackle the rest of it, I'm going to tackle just those corners so I can illustrate a principle here. I'll select everything, hit U to unwrap, or U to open up the UV mapping menu, and then I'll hit unwrap, and the middle frame part is complete garbage. We're not worrying about that just yet. So let's take a look at these shells that actually look quite nice. They look nice in the sense that they are comprehensible. I can understand what part of the mesh they're supposed to be, but they aren't quite perfect. We know, if I turn on this little icon down here in the lower right, that'll synchronize my selection. So if I select a face in here, we'll see which face it is in the UV view. So I can tell that that's a corner piece, but we see that the polygon in 3D space is square. Here it's kind of a collapsed kite shape. So we know something's going wrong. What exactly is happening and how do we fix it? Well, what's going on is that certain edges have what I like to call tension. I don't know if that's an actual term, but it's the term I use, so I'm going to keep using it. So if we take this edge here, if you could imagine this as a paper model and you had folded the polygons over and then taped them together on this edge, if you were to try and flatten that model out again, there would be a lot of tension along that edge. That tape that you put there would want to rip at some point so that you could flatten out the two polygons on either side. So if that's the case, you can sometimes look at a model here and understand that, okay, this edge probably needs to be cut so that the edges to the side of it can swing outwards. So that's true on all three of these corners, in fact. As you see, all three of them. So I'm going to cut those as well, mark those seams. Now what I'm going to do is I will is that I'll desync my selection. So again, if I hit that, all my UVs will disappear because I need to reselect all of my polygons here. I'll hold down Control and left click in order to grab all of these, all of them. Don't want that one. That was Control Shift drag, by the way. I'll hit Control i to invert my selection and then hit P to pin it. That means these vertices will not be affected by my next unwrapping operation. So I'll hit U and unwrap again in order to see what we get. Okay, so this is our resulting mesh. 